everybody. Welcome to Bascom's Corner. We are back and we're back with an awesome, awesome panel. And the panel and the topic this week is we're talking about ACL injuries. We're talking about ACL from surgery to, you know, the physical therapy. So, you know, let's talk about our panel, our special guest from MedStar Health. We're looking at the man himself, Dr. Richard Levine. And it's like I got so many stories to tell you about Dr. Levine because it's not just a doctor and an orthopedic surgeon. He is also a baller. Oh, he can play. Had him down in Bermuda, put some licks in me. So excited to have him on. You know, we have Jenna Page, who's a part of MedStar Health. Uh, Jenna has been working very hard with our academy, with our players, you know, with the PT, really kind of giving us a good understanding um, of what it's going to take and what's needed. Then we have Brian. Brian, very close friend now, I can say. He's been, um, you know, back and forward, well, going back and forward from Bermuda. But Brian has been an intricate part in connecting the pieces together. And, you know, we're going to learn much more about, you know, everyone here as far as when we're having this conversation. And Brian and Medstar Health has really been kind of um, guiding us in the right direction, not just from surgeries and injuries, but also through this whole COVID-19. They've been an intricate part of our development with the BFL Academy and also many others. So I want to thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being on. Thank you, Dave. Thanks. So we're going we're gonna to jump right into it. You know, I know it's, you know, we are, you know, going through this. I know you guys are very, very busy. And, you know, Dr. Veen, I want to ask you, as because we're talking about ACL injuries, and I know that I've had two surgeries myself, one done by you. And when we talk about ACL, what is ACL? Yeah. What is ACL? It's, it's, it's known athletes. What is ACL? Well, I actually have a model here, so I'll try to make it real easy for you. Here's a knee. This is the side view looking up in the front. I'm going to remove the kneecap so you can see inside. I'm going to bring this a little close to the camera here so you can see all the pieces. So the ACL is actually a ligament. Ligaments connect bone to bone. And in this model, it's this thing in the front right there. And you can see from the side view. Okay from the front view and what it does is it holds the two bones together and stops the thigh bone which is the top from shifting on the bottom bone okay so the acl stands for anterior cruciate ligament anterior means front cruciate because it's a crossing ligament and the l is the ligament so the purpose of this ligament is to give the knee stability there are several other ligaments in the knee but this is the common one that everybody is uh, afraid of getting and happens it's kind of a random thing but that's what the ligament is Doctor, you know when when I mean I remember when even when I had my ACL, and what are the most like the common concerns you know when an athlete or just um, you know patient comes to you? What's what's one of the biggest concerns when they're coming to you and they got an ACL injury? We, we know we have a surgery. What's one of the biggest concerns that they that, that you feel they're going to have? Oh. Well, athletes, um, you know these are healthy young people that a lot of times they've never had an injury. They've never had a a significant illness so it, it's a shock because they went from perfect health to all of a sudden something that's going to really limit them they're they're very concerned because they know just listening to the, the media tv watching other athletes that this is this is a problem where you're going to be out for a period of time and you're going to need a surgery so sometimes they're pretty scared in terms of what am i going to go through what it what is in my future what's you know it's a very unknown thing they know they have a problem but they really have little information on uh, what's coming up in the future that's great it's it's um you know brian it's one of the things i've realized brian is that there's such a process and even because when i'm talking about uh medstar health you guys are a, a strong component with the baltimore ravens um uh, also with you know the baltimore blast put me through when one of my young players one of my players go down what is, Brian, what is the next step? Because it's, you guys are the first responders, right? And and we know that how that actually works, you know, is, is, is our head trainer with us. What is the next step? What's the next step look like? Absolutely. I think that question will be even better answered by Jenna. Um, <laughs> as Jenna is the athletic trainer who's, who's on the field with the athletes, and she can speak more to it. But just a general overview as an athlete with any professional team, you should have medical staff on the sideline. It could be an athletic trainer. It could be a physical therapist. It could be a physician. Um, but as soon as that athlete goes down and needs help, the athletic trainer is going to go out and address it. There's specific tests and measures we can utilize 
to determine if the athlete is injured, if the athlete is safe to return to play. In most cases, it's an immediate triage by the athletic trainer who's then going to make a decision. Does that athlete need to see an orthopedist? Can I manage it myself or can they go back on the field? Um, and then the next step would be from the athletic training room to an orthopedist, from an orthopedist to a physical therapist. And it's just basically a full circle approach. Uh, Jenna, if you want to speak more to that. Yeah, so on the sidelines when uh, injury happens, and if we're lucky enough, we're going to have a physician with us. So if Dr. Levine's there, I, I would uh, refer to them once we see that uh, it, the injury is pretty significant and it's orthopedic in nature. Um, if they're down and they complain of a pop, that's one of the first things that we're going to check on is their uh, stability of the ACL ligament using the Lachman test. Um, from there, uh, if it's a positive test, then we are going to hold them out and we're going to ice them down. And uh, sometimes we have to immobilize them, depending if we think there's any other compounding factors. Uh, but sometimes they're able to uh, walk off the field until they're able to see a physician and follow up from there. So that's where we would connect the athlete to the physicians uh, would be the next step. So, J Jana, there's a thing and, and you hit on it because I want to I want to. Before I get back to uh, you know Dr. Levine in reference with you know the MRI process, there's an emotional piece here, right? I remember when I got taken down, and I didn't know anything about ACL, had no idea what ACL. But as soon as I went down, I heard a pop, and right there, when they came to me, they checked it. I mean that immediate check, and right away it was like, and you know what was the great thing is that they they told me possible but they gave me that worst case scenario but it still had to go through that next stage right the doctor had to make that final and says once you know once you do the mri but my emotional state was like it's over that's the first thing came to mind it's over i'm never going to play again and you guys compassion the way you have to like engage it's special because to calm us down especially as a professional and and and, and doc i'm sure you're seeing this if with the ravens we go through that whole, like, we think it's over because this is our job. Yeah. Is it any, is there anything you guys have to do to prep for that or just in the nature, you know, hope you guys work? Well, most athletic trainers aren't in it for any glory. We're in it for the thank you from the athlete afterwards. And we're in it to help um, move the athlete along. We love sports. So it hurts us just as much um, because we're a part of the team. We're a part of what's going on. Um, and compassion, you have to lead by compassion. That's one of the things that I'm excited about working with Red Star Health is that uh, through the whole process and through the whole system, I've seen nothing but compassion in the time that I've been here. Um, so uh, I think having that component and uh, also, yes, it is, it's kind of inherent as far as athletic training goes that uh, we're, we're there, we're, we're a team member for each of the athletes that we're working with. And our job is to, in that moment, take the best care of them that we can. Yeah, Dave, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, the beauty of what we have here is we're sports medicine professionals. We're doctors, physical therapists, athletic trainers, and we're experienced with this. We've been through this over and over, even though for the athlete, a lot of times this, this is the first time they were ever injured. You know, having athletic trainers out at the fields, out at the games is is so valuable because they've done this. They know how to handle the athletes. They know what to say. And they do have that experience to support the athlete completely, not only the exam, but how to treat them, how to talk to them, how to help move the process along, get rid of that unknown that the athlete is going through. Most of the time, when you tear your ACL, the exam is relatively simple. We know right away. The athlete has a good sense of it, but it's very important to prevent further injury. And that's why the trainers are so important because they'll know and they'll tell that athlete, look, it's not appropriate to go back out on the field because you're going to cause more damage. And that's the first instinct of the athlete. They say, I have to get back out there. And sometimes it's appropriate. Sometimes it's not. So having that diagnosis right there on the on the field is so important to protect the health of the athlete. And then moving on with the whole team approach, the athletic trainers, the physical therapists, getting access directly to the physician. It's so important with the whole process. And I think the athletes really see that process and feel more comfortable 
And as time goes on, they do get a sense of, wait a sec, this is not the end of the world. We're going to get through this. We're going to be treated. And as you can see, looking at your own experience, I mean, how many years did you play after your ACL, Dave? I mean, it was a long, successful career, and you're still playing. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And, and, and that was to my next point, that communication, it's kind of like a, it, it's a family, right? And it's a trusted family is is what I have seen over the years, you know, with Mets uh, Health and the, it, it is a family and everybody, the language is the same. The, it, it, it's, it's a comfort level because it can be the end cross. There is a, and, and especially with a lot of parents watching and a lot of, of, of uh, you know, players, getting them to understand the difference between uh, when they go into the doctor right away, let's say they go hospital, player gets injured, goes to the hospital, and the first thing they get in as procedure, right, they get the, um, an x-ray. Then they're like, okay, no, we want you to go see a, you know orthopedic surgeon, okay, and then they get sent for MRI. What is the difference, Doc? What is the difference between the two? Because I guess that comes into your field where, you know, okay, this is exactly what it is. You know, can you share on why the MRI? So the x-rays show us the bones. So what we're doing with an x-ray is we're ruling out the less common thing like a fracture. Okay. And so other things. I really don't expect to see a whole lot on x-rays with this type of an injury. The diagnosis of an ACL tear is made by physical exam. By history, if you have a non-contact deceleration, cutting, pivoting move, and you feel a pop and you go down, you are going to have an ACL 90-something percent of the time. There are a couple other diagnoses that can fool you, uh, kneecap dislocation, but we can tell by the history and our physical exam is pretty accurate for this diagnosis. So I would say the x-rays are to rule out other things and the MRI is really not as important as people think it is. If you've already been to one of us, we will be able to tell you your diagnosis before that MRI. We're getting the MRI to look at other things. I rarely need to see what that ACL looks like on MRI. I'm looking for the cartilage, which are the little pads between the bones, to see was there other injury that happened at the same time. And it's really for surgical planning. But the ACL is really a physical exam type of diagnosis. The MRI is, is not as important as, as uh, people think. It's really just to help us with other things that might be going on. Uh, Brian and, and Jenna, and you know either one of you can answer this, is that... I know it now with the BFL Academy and all my, my athletes and even with, is there such thing as, as and I'm, I hear it all the time, but I want to come from you guys, when you're looking at ACL prevention, is, is that, because I know we do, you guys on the functional training, and I know the answer, yeah, but I'm just throwing it out there. ACL, you know, are ACL injuries preventable or decreasing the, you know, the percentage of getting them? 100% preventable? Absolutely not. Um, as far as can can we do things to mitigate chances and do the best to strengthen the muscles around the knee and train agility, deceleration exercises and change of direction. And the more we do that, the better chance we are, are to have athletes to develop um, in those different parameters that they need to. Ab yeah, but n prevention of it 100%, uh, you know, anybody else can correct me, but I no. <laughs> Completely agree, Jenna. There's, there's not a 100% way to prevent it. However, it's really important for athletes that they know their risks and they know where they're weak, where they can be strengthened. A lot of the reason that we do screenings and various tests and measures based on resources and research is to find where the risk is most associated. We can tell you, okay, your hips are weak and if you strengthen it, that might help you. Uh, your hamstrings are tight. And that might help you if we if we get it better. But you know, we know that posture off of the field is is, is vital. Um, what I always tell my patients is posture precedes your position, and position precedes your performance. Which means that if you're not in a good position, your your muscles are not as strong and as capable. Your ligaments, your tendons, uh, and you're not going to perform optimally. But as you know better than anybody, as an athlete on the field, you're just going. You're not thinking about it. Your body's just moving and doing it for you. And if you have your muscles firing in better patterns and your body's in better positions, yes, you're less likely to be injured. But again, you never know. We never want to see that in an athlete. But, 
you know, we, we are there beforehand and we're there afterhand, so to speak. Doc, I, I, um, and, and, and I'm, I'm not sure if you can answer this. Um, what is, um, cause I'm a little, you know, when I got my first ACL injury, I actually, uh, stayed up and watched it all, watched the whole injury, got a spinal block and watched it because I was intrigued. What is the, the typical, uh, or just that surgery reconstruction approach. What is your approach to it? And also, because one thing is that I remember going to the doctor and they asked me, they had, they, I, we had these options of, uh, you know, talatendin, cadaver, uh, hamstring. I had no idea in my first one, okay, in Harrisburg, I said, yep, oh, cadaver sounds good. I, I guess I get that one. N nobody else is using it. That was my mindset. Okay, that must be strong. What is that approach? And, like, is it any... Because I know when I done with you, with you when you done my surgery, I, I'm sure we done the uh, patella tendon, yeah. And it was interesting because I've recovered like a crazy man, recovered faster than my first surgery. So, it's, what's the approach for for ACL reconstruction? You know, can you talk a little bit about that? Is that? Yeah, and you know, ACL reconstruction is an ever evolving um, process. And this, if you look all the way back, we used to do all types of things prior to my being a physician where they repaired ACLs. Then there were different types of grafts, some synthetic grafts. And over the past maybe 25 years or so, we really evolved to this reconstruction technique where we take something from somewhere else and put it back in the knee to give you a new ACL. Now, options typically were the patellar tendon. And go back to my knee model here. This is the patellar tendon. It goes from the kneecap to the shin bone. So we take a center strip of this. So we get a little bit of bone from the kneecap, some bone from the shin bone. So you have bone, tendon, bone. And we put that back inside of the knee to give you a brand new ligament. Other options that have evolved would be the hamstring tendons, the stringy things behind your legs. And now we're starting to use things like quadriceps tendons as well. In terms of the cadaver tissue, it's ideal to take something from someone else so we don't have the, the downside of, of robbing somewhere in your knee. The problem is, over the years, we have found that those cadaver tissues are not quite as strong as your own tissue, especially in our under 25 population. So if you're talking about a young athlete, I think it's become pretty standard of care today not to use a cadaver tissue in these people. Now, perhaps you can use it in somebody who's older that's not going to stress the knee as well, and that has some controversy to it. But right now, I would say the gold standard is something from your knee. The patellar tendon is the most common, but looking at the future, we are revisiting the concept of repair. So reconstruction is different than repair. Reconstruction mm. is putting a graft in the knee, and let's face it, this is not a normal knee after it's reconstructed. Okay, this is a rebuilt knee. And the long-term issues that we have is not necessarily getting back on the field, but it's wearing that knee out because the mechanics aren't quite right over the course of the athlete's life. And we have to talk about long-term health of the athlete and their knee. So there's a resurgence now of research on ACL repairs. There are several studies looking at how do we get this done and some new technology in biologics, putting in the knee, and, and I think that there's a good chance this will be the future of, of ACL surgery. But right now, gold standard is still reconstruction. It, it's 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 that once the reconstruction's done, once my ACL is repaired, this is the piece where now Jan and Brian, your group comes in. What is that next process? Yeah, what can you give us like a? Um, kind of like a timeline or expectation because I know that there's certain protocols. What is that next step? I just came out of surgery. When do we see you? And then what does that uh, timeline before I can get back out on the field look like? Yeah, absolutely. From a physical therapy perspective, uh, as research has changed over the years, we're finding getting people into rehab faster is better. Uh, in fact, we've been doing what's called prehab now, which would be getting an athlete in prior to them having surgery. So if we know there's somebody with a positive ACL who's going to have surgery, we might get them in for a couple of visits beforehand just to make sure we're getting the muscles stronger, their flexibility where it needs to be so that they can have better long-term outcomes. 
once they get into surgery, we do have specific protocols. I actually have one here that I sent out to you, David, through MedStar. A lot of our physicians have different protocols that physical therapists might follow. Um, but long story short, it usually goes like this. You'll see the first stage, which is always going to be protecting the graft, letting it heal, get that athlete better, get the swelling down, start to get their quad muscle control stronger, their knee extension better. The second stage is going to be once they have good enough quad strength and range of motion, we'll start progressing their range of motion, progressing their strength. Then there's usually a third phase, which starts with an advanced strengthening, and then a fourth or fifth phase, which is going to get you back to training and back on the field. Every athlete's different. I can't give you an answer as of when we're going to get somebody back on the field, but if I'm talking to my athlete, I'm going to, I'm going to tell them it's going to be about a year. Uh, the most recent research I've read on NFL athletes says the average NFL athlete gets back in about 10.8 months, and that's a professional high-intensity athlete. So as a whole, the rehab process is probably going to last four to six months solidly with a lot of work on the home front as well, but we're probably not getting athletes back for, for a season. You go down in the middle of the season, you're probably not returning till the next season. Now, that's great. It's... it's um... I was going through, you know, I was going through some of these pieces and uh, a lot of times you hear this a lot, especially when I'm sending like um, some of my Bermuda athletes up here, even some of the local athletes I'm sending that's having knee injury. And it's one thing is that they're always saying, and I'm not sure the importance of how it's processed, the saying is that, well, uh, strengthen the knee up before you get the ACL surgery. Is there any... Because I just remember when I got mine, I just went straight in. I just went straight in. I don't know. It has to do with a lot of swelling. But can anyone of you talk on that? Is that is, is there a huge importance for the need to be strengthened up? Um, you know, well, I guess, Doc, I, I ask you because I guess that's one of the things as far as like, is it the swelling or is it the recovery after it? Well, you know, when people tear their ACL, unfortunately, a lot of times you injure other structures in the knee. So the traditional teaching years ago was if you had more than one ligament injured, say ACL and your MCL, which is a ligament on the side, then you might want to give a little time prior to surgery to let some of that knee heal, the MCL specifically, before we get in there and do the surgery. Because one of the risks in doing surgery on a joint, especially a knee, is stiffness after the surgery. So the concept that if you are stiff with a very swollen, hot looking knee before the surgery, the chances after the surgery, you're going to wake up and have the same issue. And then you got to work through that. So if we see an athlete and they've torn their ACL and their knee looks pretty good, it's going to swell. It's going to be painful, but they have a full motion. Well, then we can go ahead and do that surgery relatively quickly. But if I see an athlete that has just a difficulty with motion prior to going in, that's going to be an issue. So it's relatively individualized. And the other issue is, of course, there's a cartilage pad inside the knee called the meniscus. So in some scenarios, when that meniscus has displacement or it's kind of flipped upside down, that forces us to move ahead with surgery relatively quickly to put the meniscus back where it belongs so we don't cause further injury. So it's kind of a complex question. There's this thing called prehab that you might have heard of, and that's the rehab prior to surgery. And I think, like you said originally, you know, athletes don't know what to expect. They have this injury and there's this big unknown. So I think one of the greatest values of this prehab is they get a comfort seeing the physical therapist who can walk them through, hey, this is what you're going to expect. This is what you're going to go through. This is the type of thing you're going to do after your surgery. So again, taking care of the athlete, the whole athlete, prehab is so important in just getting a, an understanding and help that athlete through the process. But in terms of does it make a difference in terms of outcome? Probably not, but there are studies that go both ways. It's still an unknown. That is greatly appreciated. Before we before we get off, and I know I'm going to throw some questions, you know, a question at each, you know, each one of you. Um, Brian, I'm going to start with you. Um, my question for you is that the amount of work that it takes, and uh, you know, the schooling that you went through, all these. I mean, how did you? Number one is that how did you get into the field? into this field and, and and the second piece to that is that what is your biggest motivation okay. so to answer your question um how did i get into physical therapy long story um 
I'll spare you the details, but actually uh, I went to the University of Maryland College Park for my undergraduate. Um, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in journalism. So uh, I came out of school as a writer and on the side while I was in school, I had actually become a personal trainer to make additional money. And I kind of carried that on in the background as I was focusing on my journalism career. And when I got out of school, I started doing journalism. It was not something that I had a passion for. I was going to work every day didn't really like it. And I kind of questioned, well, why am I going to work every day for a profession I don't like? And what is something that I like? And that's physical fitness, sports. So I started working as a wellness coordinator and it was actually in a physical therapy clinic. So we would step down patients from physical therapy to personal training. And I would work with a lot of these patients. For example, somebody who had an ACL who no longer needed therapy, they might now come to me and I would do medically based training with them. Um, and from that point, I just decided to further my career and go on to be a physical therapist, um, which took a lot more effort because I had to go back to school and take additional prerequisites. It took me four years after I graduated undergraduate just to take all the prerequisites. So I basically went to college a whole second time and then I got into graduate school. So I'm a huge proponent of, of taking students and taking people under my wing and educating them on what to do and how to do it and to focus on your sciences and your anatomy and your biomechanics. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of how I got into the field in terms of motivation. Um, I love education. I think to Dr. Levine's point, you know, bringing an athlete in pre-surgery or even during surgery, after surgery, we really focus on education of that athlete. I strongly believe that if we instill you with the tools and the knowledge base moving forward, you will really get yourself better. Mm -hmm. It's my stance as the therapist. It's the patient's responsibility to get themselves better. I'm going to give you those tools to do that along the way. I'm going to help push you along. Um, but I really rely on my patients to take the ball and run with it, so to speak. Now, that's awesome. And uh, Doc, I, and I'm going to be honest with you. I have never experienced uh, like a more passionate. I'm, when I'm talking about the support that you give the patients. Now, I've been around very few doctors with my ACL, but just in general, um, I send patients to you and you call them like you don't, you call them right away. You're called my, some of my uh, players, the moms made them feel so comfortable. The fathers, the families to make them feel comfortable. And it's, I said, listen, Dr. Levine's going to call you right now. They're like, what? And, 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 you know, that drive and passion that you have, the comfort level. And it's not even that it's not even after the surgery is completed you're still connecting you're still connecting you got a better memory than me because you asked me about patients and i'm like and you're telling me okay how is this why i said uh, oh yes yes doing well so my question for you is that like is this what does this drive come from what does this drive come from because i have seen some doctors and it's business coming in take care of you and that's it where does this drive come from and how did you get into being, you know, orthopedic surgeon? Well, well, thanks, Dave. And, you know, you have to love what you do. So my advice to all those young athletes out there, when you're trying to figure out what am I going to do as I get older, go with your passion, do what you love. And I, and I love being a doctor and I love athletics. And to me, it's not work. I'll tell you, I spend a lot of hours on the sideline between the, the football games I cover, the colleges, the professional teams. I enjoy being on the sidelines and taking care of these athletes. I was an athlete in college. I played soccer and lacrosse at Cornell, and I've been doing this my entire life. So, you know, it, it's it's not work for me to call a patient, to follow up with them, to be on the sidelines, to help people through this process. So I, I think I'm just very fortunate that I've found a field that I'm passionate about. And, um, you know, I think just some advice for those young athletes out there be it medicine or engineering or whatever it is that your passion is, you know, follow it. And then you'll find that going to work is no longer going to work. It's what you do and it's what you love. Now, well said, I want to thank you. Um, I know that, you know, Jana had to leave the call um, as, as you, she knows. So I appreciate you guys time. Uh, and I, I want to say thank you for, for sharing. I know your time is very, you know, valuable. And also I want to say thank you to, you know, MedStar Health, they have been a huge support to to many athletes, many families, um, you know, and patients, you know, in this area. 
and even in Bermuda. So I want to say thank you very much uh, for sharing. To everybody who's watching, listen, let me tell you, you got an injury, you know to call. Don't call me. I can't help you. You better get a hold of, you know, MedStar Health. Very important. And, I, I, you know, even if you're calling for information, and Dr. Levine, you have saved my career. You have saved my career and also shared so much knowledge. Brian, I always appreciate working with you. Very professional. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Awesome, awesome job. See you next week on Bascom's Corner. Thanks, Dave. Thanks.